Hello everyone. Welcome to this lecture in the neural network from scratch series. Until this point in this series, we have looked at a large number of lectures on training a neural network. We looked at the forward pass, we looked at the backward pass, and in the last lecture we also saw how to train an entire neural network with the forward and backward pass completely from scratch. however up till now we have not looked at testing so until now we just had training data and we trained the neural network or optimized the weights and biases of the neural network so that its performance on the training data is very good in real life however much more than the training data it is really very important to make sure that the neural network performs well on the testing data as well and that's called as the out of sample um, out of sample data so along with the training data it's very important to make sure that the neural network is optimized so that its performance on new data or test data is also good it's like preparing for an exam let's say we prepare for an exam really very well all of it does not matter right until we do a good performance on the test so imagine for example you have trained a neural network to recognize the license plate numbers but if you give a new license plate number to the neural network and it does a very bad job then although it was trained very well it means that the neural network performance on the test data or new data is not very good and so it's that neural network won't be very useful in practice or in real life applications that's why generalization performance is very important when we say generalization what we mean is that the neural network should be able to perform very well on the data which it has not seen before and this is very important as a machine learning enge engineer or a machine learning practitioner getting the neural network to train very well is just 50% of the job done there is the remaining 50% of the task remaining uh to make sure that the testing is good and sometimes you need to go back change the architecture of the neural network itself so that the performance is good on the test data um so let us see what all we have done up till now so if someone is coming to this lecture for the first time it's totally fine usually in this series we look at this data set which is called as the spiral data set you will see that every point in this data set has two attributes uh, x1 is the first attribute and x2 is the second attribute and every point in this data set belongs to either of the three classes r g or b our goal is to design a neural network so that when any new point is given to the neural network it classifies it as red green or blue up till now we have trained the neural network on these 100 points and uh, the training performance of the neural network is very good so as you can see uh, the dots here are the actual data and the boundaries uh, boundary col colors are the predictions so you can see that the boundary color and the actual data color match pretty well which means that we are doing really well on the training data for all the points in the training data the neural network is making almost correct predictions and uh, the accuracy which we have obtained is close to 93% with the adam optimizer we even implemented this in code so let me show you that part of the code where we implement the forward and the backward pass so here is where we uh, this is the training data here is the neural network architecture we use uh, in the first layer we use 64 neurons then we add the activation function which is relu in the last layer we have uh, three output neurons which will correspond to the red green or blue and then we chain the softmax that's the neural network architecture uh, we use the adam optimizer and uh, in the adam there are number of parameters such as beta 1 beta 2 and there is a parameter alpha so alpha decays with time as alpha not divided by 1 plus dk into time alpha not value is used as 0.02 and dk value is used as 10 raised to minus 5 the reason i am telling all these parameters is that all of this will become useful to us when we discuss about how to improve generalization then what we do is that we perform 10000 iterations of the forward pass and the backward pass 
and uh, when we plot the accuracy for different epochs this is what we obtain we go through the data set 10000 different times and by the time we reach the end we can see that with the adam optimizer we have obtained an accuracy of almost 0.93 or 93% this clearly implies that the neural network performs very very well on the training data that's great right but we don't need to stop here in fact uh, this does not matter if the performance on the test data is not very good so let me first talk a bit about what is generalization and how can you look at a prediction plot and comment whether the generalization is good or whether the generalization is poor this is also sometimes asked as an interview question so it's very important to notice the interview question is this let's say uh you are given a plot of the neural network prediction with the actual data and you are given two plots on the left hand side is plot number 1 and on the right hand side is plot number 2 can you look at these plots and tell which prediction generalizes well or would perform better on the test data and which prediction has a poor generalization or it will not perform better on the test data i will pause here for a while first you can make a guess and try to think of an answer as to why you made that guess it's not just enough to answer correctly you will be asked to provide the reasoning for it okay so the plot on the left hand side has a good generalization performance and the plot on the right hand side has a poor generalization performance the reason for this is let's zoom in here a bit if you look at the model you can see that the model tries to memorize the data perfectly and it tries to go through all of the data points and try to capture all of the data points right uh, so in an essence the model is memorizing the training data and maybe this part which it is capturing is just noise so look at the red red contour if you look at the red contour you will see that uh, the red contour takes shapes like these which clearly means it is getting over specialized on the training data what if these two red points here are just noise because they are going out of the way right maybe they are just noise and we should not be capturing them but they are being captured uh, this kind of uh, memorization of the data is also seen over here the model goes out of its way to capture this one point over here but what if this point is just noise so the plot on the right hand side is actually capturing the noise in the data set and this phenomena is called as overfitting this is very important and you will hear this a lot of times in machine learning books in machine learning videos and overfitting comes into the picture when we are dealing with test data so on the right hand side we see a clear example of overfitting so overfitting means that we are doing unnecessarily a large amount of fitting on the training data where clearly the model is memorizing all minute details of the training data which may actually just be noise now let's see how this overfitting leads to a bad performance on the test data so let's say we have a test data point over here which is marked by this black point uh this test data point is is true value is blue because it lies in this in this region which is generally surrounded by blue points now since our model has gone out of the way to incorrectly classify this entire region as red our model will classify this black test data point as red whereas its true value is actually blue so that will lead to a, a wrong performance on the test data this is why overfitting does not lead to good predictions on the test data because the model has memorized so well on the training data when a question comes out of the syllabus for the model or if you are, if you, if you give a data point which it has not seen before it does a poor prediction on that data point we do not want overfitting when we design uh, neural networks we want the model to have good generalization performance now compare this right hand side poor generalization model with the left hand side model if you look at the left hand side model we do not have these uh, these shapes which have this kind of a shape and all this looks like a very smooth contour and if you look at the training data this smooth contour definitely makes some mistakes so for example this point is mistaken uh this point is mistaken and even this point is mistaken and that's totally fine 
it's fine to make mistakes on the training data set as long as you do a great performance on the test data now let's say we have the same black region or black point over here uh, this point will be classified correctly by this model as the blue because it has not gone out of its way to uh, incorrectly term that entire region as red so remember that for your model to have good generalization performance it's okay to have low accuracy or lower accuracy on the training data set we do not need to aim for 100% accuracy on the training data set because then we get something like this on the training data set the accuracy on the right side is more than the accuracy on the left side but it will have a on the right side it will have a much worse performance on the test data on the other hand we will prefer something like on the left hand side although its training data accuracy will be a bit lower uh, its model looks to be a lot simpler and that's why it will have a good generalization performance this is one more trick to identify whether a model will generalize well or not look for how simple it is the more complex the model is the poor the generalization performance it will have if you look on the right hand side here we can see that the model is definitely more complex right because it has a very complex contour whereas the model on the left hand side is simpler so it will have a good generalization performance this trick holds true for a lot of different cases remember simpler the model good generalization performance it will have poorer or co more complex the model the poorer the generalization performance it will have okay so now actually let us uh, run the model which we have developed on the test data so i showed you that we ran the adam optimizer on the training data set and we obtained an accuracy of 93% now what we will be doing is that using this same spiral data command we will be generating new data which is test data so what this spiral data command does is that it it randomly creates data in the uh, format of a spiral which which i have shown over here in the training data set we generated 100 samples and we had a good performance accuracy we had 93 percent now let's see how this model performs on the test data so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create the test data set um, on completely and this will be completely new data samples and I'll be generating 100 of those. What I'll be doing, we don't need to do a backward pass here because we just need to do a forward pass and compare the model prediction with the actual value. So I'll do the forward pass through the first layer, the first activation, the second layer and the second activation and then I'll compute the final prediction and then I'll calculate the accuracy and the loss. So uh, let me run this part right now. So if I run this part right now, you see that we get a validation accuracy of 0.83 and a loss of 0.81. So the validation accuracy is almost lower by 0.1 or 10% than the training accuracy. This is a clear example that our training model can be overfitted. If the validation accuracy is 10% lower, like in this case, the training accuracy was 93%, but the test accuracy or the validation accuracy was 10% lower, which is 83%. This is clearly an example of overfitting. And we can see that if we plot, uh, if we plot the prediction model, so, uh, right. So if you see on the right hand side, this is how our model is doing right now. Uh, I have marked two test data points, these two red points, these two red points and uh, let me switch to a pen. Right, so I have marked the test data points over here, these two red points and uh, look at these two blue points. These are the test data, but you can clearly see that they have been incorrectly classified by our model they fall these two blue points fall in the red region so they will be classified as red and these two red points fall in the blue region so they will be classified as blue and you can see that our model has these contours which means that our model is overfitting on the test data what this actually means is that we need to go back to the drawing board again and then we need to uh, change some things i'll come to that but initially let me just show you uh, one key feature of overfitting so now i'm plotting the our model prediction with the test data 
and I want you to observe the plot on the right hand side. You will see that initially the plot decreases, but then it will have spikes. So you will see that initially the loss is decreasing, right? But did you observe the spike? Look at look at this spike over here. So the loss is decreasing and then there is a sudden increase in the loss. This is a perfect example of overfitting uh, because the loss decreases and then we encounter samples on which the performance is very bad. So the loss suddenly increases. If I keep on running this, you will see that there are these frequent spikes which come up. Spike number one, spike number two, spike number three, etc. This, this, this is an indication that uh, our model is currently overfitting on the testing data. Now the question is how do we prevent overfitting or how do we design the neural network so that our model generalizes well and there can be number of different things to do. The first thing to check is the model complexity itself. As I mentioned the simpler the model the better the generalization is. So currently if you look at the code we have 64 units. So let me show you in the code. If you look at the code right now we have uh, we have 64 units in the first layer, right? So what if these number of units can be reduced? That would lead to a model with a lower complexity, right? In the And then that would also reduce the number of units in the second layer. That is one way to prevent overfitting is to reduce the model complexity. The second way is to reduce the number of epochs. So you can see that as the epochs increase the loss, the loss showed a peak, right? What if we just did 4000 or 5000 epochs? Um, there are many other ways such as introducing a dropout in the neural network, adding a regularization term in the neural network, etc. And we will look at all of these in the subsequent lectures. In this lecture, I just want you to appreciate that there are when we finish the training, our job does not end over there. We might get a very good accuracy of around 93% on training. But as I currently demonstrated, the test accuracy which we have is only 83% and our model is not performing very well on the test data. So we need to go back to the drawing board and change the hyperparameters of the neural network. We might need to change the number of layers, the number of units in each layer. One more attribute which we might need to change is the learning rate. So look at the learning rate which we have started with. That might also influence overfitting. Then the number of iterations can influence overfitting. The decay rate can influence overfitting. All of these parameters are in our control which we can change and that's why these parameters are called as hyperparameters. So uh, we just took these parameters randomly. We did not tune it in lectures up till now but all the subsequent lectures in this series will be focused on testing data and how we can improve the testing performance. So thank you so much everyone and I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture.